Hello class, let's learn how to use Overleaf, an online LaTeX editor. Of course, there are standalone LaTeX editors, um, but this is a good one to get started with while you're just finding out how it all works. So you wanna to go to overleaf.com and sign up for an account, it's free. And once you've done that, it's time to create the first project. So let's come in here and just create a blank project. Let's call it my first paper, like that. So it's gonna do its thing. And what we see here is a little bit of code and then the result of compiling that code over here. Um, look, I've set it up at some point. I've gone in, I think it's, where is it? There's somewhere around here where I, you can change whether you've got a dark background and, and things like that. Maybe it's in the menu. Um, there's various things, the font size, the, the type of font that you want for your code. Um, I've done all that in the past, just in case you're wondering why yours looks a bit different. Um, now, what's what's the ultimate goal here? We're, we're trying to write, write a maths paper. Let's go and see what the pros do when they're writing a maths paper. So I've gone to archive.org and we're going to have a look at some number theory. And we are going to just have a, a quick squeeze at repetitions of multinomial coefficients. Notice that mathematicians, when they're distributing their work, they do so as a PDF. And the reason why that's important is because that means that what they see is what we see as the reader. Um, so there you go. That's what it looks like. You know, in Word, it's all dependent on are we using the same version of Word and are we on a Mac or a Windows machine, all of that type of thing. You get around that problem um, if you make sure that you're distributing your work as a PDF. So what do we see? We see a nice clear title. We see the author's names. We see an abstract. We see section one introduction. It's always the way it's done. Now, in the introduction, what you want to do is you want to throw in a few references to make sure it looks like you've been reading around, that you know what you're talking about, um, and you're sort of piquing the interest of the reader. You're trying to set the scene. Notice how when we're writing maths, we always write in proper paragraphs and proper sentences. And importantly, we're using things like full stops and commas. And that's really important. You don't want to say, oh, well, I'm doing mathematics, so all of that stuff goes out the window. You still need to punctuate your maths because it's a really good cue to help the reader the reader will know, oh, this is when I'm going to take a, a breath. There's a comma there. Um, this is where a sentence is coming to a conclusion. There's going to be a full stop there. You know, that type of thing. Okay, we'll just have a look at another one. Let's look at towards a piatic uniformization. And just see, is it going to be similar? Oh, yeah, nice clear title, author's names, abstract, section one introduction. Again, we're doing maths, but we're still going to punctuate it because otherwise it's going to be really, really hard to understand what we're doing. Yes, there's lots of symbols and stuff like that, but there's still paragraphs in here. Okay, so my first paper, I don't like this author's name. I'm going to go in there and change that to my true name, which is Peter Jen. And you can see that as I did it, yes, the code changed but it didn't change over here because we haven't compiled that code. So we just click on recompile and all of a sudden we've got the change. And it's a good idea to recompile on a regular basis because that way we can find where errors are creeping in. You will get errors when you start using LaTeX. Even if you've been using it for years and years, you'll get errors. And if you compile regularly, then you'll be able to find those errors easily. Um, I'm going to go forward slash today for the date. That way, whenever I compile my code, it's going to make sure that it gets the right date. Um, because I might start this now, come back to it in a few months time, and I want to make sure that I always keep getting the right date there. Now, when I'm writing a paper, what I like to do is I like to block out my paper into a sort of logical structure and then work on the meat of the thing. So I'm going to put in a few sections. Um, let's call this one the next section. Let's call this one a nice section. And let's call this one 
a not nice section. Not that we would ever write a section that wasn't nice, but I'm not feeling very creative today. So if we compile those, of course, what we're going to see is our section headings coming. And if we were doing this in Microsoft Word, we'd have to change the font, make it bold face. We would need to, you know, up the, the point size. It would be a real pain. Um, but here we just enter it like that. Actually, this is looking a little bit different to what their papers were looking like. That's because they were, instead of using an article document class, they were using an AMS art document class. And I'm pretty sure that means American Mathematical Society article. This is a fine document class, by the way, the article document class, but the American Mathematical Society article document class, some people prefer. Okay. Uh, now, uh, I would like to just put in a little bit of dummy text in here to pad things out a little bit. Of course, I could go onto the internet and find some dummy text and just copy paste it in. There's a better way though, when we're doing LaTeX. So we'll come back up here into our preamble and we'll go use package. And in the curly brackets, we're gonna write can't lipsum. What does this mean? This is a manual can't writing and it's lorem ipsum or a version of. Um, so that, that's why they called this package can't lipsum. If we recompile, nothing will have changed here because this is just stuff up in the preamble. All right, it's the nuts and bolts. So what are we going to do? We're going to go in here and we're going to say, look, forward slash can't, square brackets, I'd like to have paragraphs one to two. And we'll compile. And now we've got a bit of dummy text here. As any dedicated reader can clearly see, the, um, you know, whatever etc etc okay so we're padding this thing out a little bit very useful when you're building websites as well so have a bit of dummy text to kind of just pad things out all right paragraphs three to five in this section um, paragraphs uh, six to seven nice short section there and in the not nice se section let's make that a real bumper section paragraphs 8 to 20 maybe maybe that's why it's not nice okay compile that and you can soon enough see that we've got something that's approaching a maths paper unfortunately there's no maths in it yet <laughs> we'll have to work on that notice how um, latex automatically giving us things like page numbers and um, a nice um, header up here and things like that and we don't need to worry about that. So you can work quite quickly, actually. Once you work out that how LaTeX kind of works, you can work quickly in LaTeX. Now, we saw that the pros, they like to put in an, an abstract, which is just a, a snippet, the Cliff Notes version of the paper. So before we come to the introduction, let's put one in. So let's begin an abstract. I'm going to click enter and it's just going to automatically put that in for us. And let's have paragraph 21 of Emmanuel Kant. Okay, now we've got an abstract. Notice how it's indented a little bit more, which is what we do with abstracts. And it's in a smaller point size as well. It's quite a long abstract, that one. So when I wrote the real thing, I'd probably pare it down a little bit. Um, but in a pinch, that's going to have to do for now. All right, it's coming together quite nicely. Now I'm thinking it might be a good idea to just put in a little bit of maths and then we can call it for this video. So we can line up equations by doing... And we'll just go into a special environment, which we can use because we're in an AMS art document class here. We're going to go begin, click enter, align. And what are we going to align? We're just going to do a, a simple rearrangement of the Pythagorean theorem. So remember how that one goes, C squared equals A squared plus B squared. 
Uh, let's take b squared from both sides of this equation to leave a squared equals c squared take b squared like that and let's take the square root of both sides of this equation so a itself is going to be equal to forward slash square root c squared take b squared now we're actually coming to the end of a sentence here so of course we've got to put a full stop right because we we started our sentence with a capital letter so we better end it with a terminal stop oh i haven't got my squared there do i and we'll compile it we, this won't be right by the way but it'll be easy enough to fix so here it is here's the code compiled our purpose was to sort of line things up nicely at the equal symbol and we don't even have things on separate lines so how do we put things on separate lines we need to go forward slash forward slash and that will kick us onto the next line and then we go forward slash forward slash and that will kick us onto the next line here we don't need to do it because we don't need to go into the next line there okay so better but we're not lined up at the equal symbol and that was the whole idea so how do we fix that up well we need to tell latex where to do it and for that we're going to use a special character called ampersand and wherever we put an ampersand that's where we're going to line things up so because we're trying to line things up at the equal symbol that's where we want to put our ampersands we'll compile and we're good to go now you will have noticed that we've got equation numbers here so we've got equation one equation two and equation three which is all well and good i would prefer actually to have those equation numbers over there on the right hand side instead of on the left hand side so when we come up to the document class here we can just put square brackets and we can put in some options and the options that i would like would be to have right equation numbers r e q n o right equation numbers and there they are over there on the right in fact what I like to do normally when I'm doing this is I would generally put this down on its own line like that you'll see when I compile it it will still work but the advantage of doing it this way is that you can quickly comment that out so you can just append a, a percent symbol there and it changes the color and that way when we compile it we just ignore that line of code and so because the default behavior is to have these guys over on the left hand side by ignoring that line saying to go over to the right hand side it goes back to the left hand side and we can put in other options in here as well so for, ex for example we could put in something like perhaps we want to do this in 10 point font so 10 point and I'll put a comma because I'm going on to the next option as well so perhaps that's changed the the size or you could put it to 12 point font okay now we've we've got quite large type or you could comment that out you could put it back to 11 point font there's a few the, the take home message here is that when you go up into your document class <clears throat> there's a few different options that you can put in there i wonder if um with the ams art if 10 point font is the default perhaps it is i don't know i don't know uh for sure actually okay so that's what we do there um and what else can i tell you oh yeah one one last thing that i just want to mention or a couple of things actually it's easy enough to put in the table of contents uh so we could put that here forward slash table of contents mm, yeah not not essential if you're writing a very short paper like this one which is only a few pages along but as your paper grows in complexity and size uh, that might be a useful thing to do and i don't know does it what's the 
the idea here, does that go after the abstract? I honestly don't know because I don't use a table of contents um, on a regular basis. I don't know. <laughs> Not sure where that's supposed to go, but anyway, you can see that if you change the order of it in the code, it's going to go to a different spot. Um, if you do know where it's supposed to go, maybe drop a comment down below into the comment section. Okay, the last thing I promise that I want to show you. Yes, we've put our equation numbers back over to the left. It might be the case that you don't even want equation numbers. The trick in LaTeX to get rid of equation numbers is to put a star. So if, instead of beginning and ending an aligned environment, if we begin and end an aligned star environment, when we compile this, you'll find that these equation numbers are going to disappear. Okay, and that works in general. So for instance, instead of having number one introduction and so on and so forth, if we write a section star like that, then instead of having the number one introduction, we're just going to have introduction. And of course, that's going to propagate into our table of contents as well. So I don't know what you prefer there. Perhaps you prefer to have numbers. Um, if you prefer to have numbers, then you get rid of all of those starts. Okay, anyway, that's that's a start. We'll have some more videos later on showing some other functionality in LaTeX, um, but uh, that's, the, that's the first couple of things that you might want to do in here.